Hey guys, welcome to Table Community. Uh, I want to give you a, a, a couple quick announcements. church from Louisiana, Cook Baptist Church is coming up, to, to they're sending a group up, uh, and we're going to be doing outreach in the, in the neighborhood all week, and so we'll be doing some um, partnering with the seniors group over at the Needmore Center, we'll be doing um, uh, some yard work and maintenance type stuff at different houses all around the neighborhood that week, uh, and so we'll be doing that every day, Tuesday through Friday from 1030 to 3. So if you want to be a part of that, you can sign up. There's a sign-up sheet. Um, I left my computer at home, so it's not a very fancy sign-up sheet. Uh, but you can sign up right over there by the coffee afterwards. And so if you know that I'll be free at any time during those times during the week, we'd love to have you come and be a part of that. So um, you probably were told up front that we, we did there's some changes with the kids. And so the kids we're doing third grade, or excuse me, second grade and under are in the back. And so that's a temporary fix until September because it's been a little crazy back there. Uh, and so uh, we kind of put an age cap on the kids for right now, but that, that will hopefully change in September uh, because we're talking to the landlord now about leasing some other space right down here on Sunday mornings that we can use just for Sunday mornings. And so the adults will be over there. That would mean the kids can spill out into this space as well. Uh, and so our hope is in sometime this fall, we'll be able to have uh, elementary up front and then anything below kindergarten in the back and the nursery uh, and all that kind of stuff. And so that'll give us all kind of space to do uh, stuff there. And so with that will mean we'll have to have some people, uh, more people in serve roles and those kinds of things. Uh, we're kind of really excited about the direction that's going. We have a, a group of people that meets that's kind of planning kids ministry for this fall. Um, so we're trying to do some really cool stuff where we just we don't just tie kids. It's not like kids are just like back there doing their thing. The kids are going to kind of do parallel the teaching. We'll kind of parallel what we're doing, and so there'll be uh, the kids ministry will tie into what the rest of the family is doing, uh, and then we're also going to work to do some partnerships within the community so that the kids. They, they're not just off by themselves. They're actually tied into the mission of what we're doing into the community as well. And so we're trying to trying to tie everything together. So, you know, our commitments are that we would belong. Well, the kids kind of do that now. They have this space. Uh, but we're trying to really, uh, one of our commitments is grow. And so we want them to explore that a little more and what it means to, to reach and to connect with the community as well. Uh, and then what does it look like for a kid to give back some of what they have? Uh, and so we're really excited about where kids ministry is going and some of the uh, potential things that we have this fall. Um, so if you're not serving and kids are signed up to do that at some point, I want to invite you to do that. Uh, we got some special guests with us today. Um, this is Christina. Christina. I don't know your last name. Kane. Christina Kane. Um, she'll be she'll be singing, and I heard her practice, and it's really good. Um, <laughs> And Corey, raise your hand, Corey. I think most everybody in here knows Corey by now. I think so, yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's good. Corey brings the crew with him, and so we're glad to have uh, all the rest of the guests that are with us here today. And so I was a little worried when I asked Corey to come speak on basically July 4th weekend. I was like, there might be three of us in the room. <laughs> so I'm glad we're glad to have all the, the extra people in the room with us today. So uh, I'm going to uh, pray, and then we'll... Dear God, thank you so much for today. Thank you for uh, the sunshine and the beautiful weather and just a chance to come and, and to worship you. Uh, we thank you for such a diverse group of faces in the room today. Uh, we just ask that our praise will look like the praise that uh, you experience in heaven every day. 
Um, we just open our heart to you, and we open our hands to you, and we just ask you to take us wherever you want to go. We love you, and we thank you for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Anybody excited to be in the house of God today? Yeah. Um, we have a couple of new songs for you guys this morning, real simple. You'll just join in and just worship with us this morning. You'll stand and worship with us this morning. Hands up, hands up, 
the names fade away Until I let someone leave you Let all the other names fade away Jesus, take your place Jesus, take your place Give us for our yes. apathy, Lord God. Jesus. Forgive yes. us for any lackluster praise, God, Thank concerning the Lord God. My God. My God. Forgive us for taking for granted the very um, life that we have, God. Yes. That we count the next 10 seconds as sure, and they're not, God. Mm -hmm. It's completely up to you. It's you that gives us life. 
second by second. Yes, God. Not of our own will, not of our own doing, but totally of your own ability. Yes. 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 Your own desire. Yes. Because there's something that you have for us to do. Yes. yes. That's right. And we need life. Yes. So we thank you right now, Jesus, for the life. Hallelujah. That you give. Yes. And the life that you are. Yes, yeah. Jesus. In Jesus, name. In Jesus. Amen. 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 Um, you can be seated, I think. I don't know the custom here. Uh, so I don't know if you stand for the reading of the word or, or, or what. I'm not sure. So somebody who's part of the home team, let me know. What do you do here? Do you stand? We'll do whatever you want. Whatever you ask. Oh, so Simon says. Right. <laughs> yeah, but just to give reverence to God, let's go ahead and stand as we read his word. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, today we're going to come from uh, John chapter 17, verses 17. I'm going to read 17 through uh, 26. Is that all right? Yes. Um, yeah, so what's on the screen is God's word translation. I like that because it's kind of plain and to the point. Yeah. Everybody ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Ready. All right. So 17. It says, use the truth to make them holy. Your words are truth. I have sent them into the world the same way you sent me into the world. I'm, I'm dedicating myself to this holy work I'm doing for them so that they too will use the truth to be holy. I'm not praying only for them. I'm also praying for those who will believe in me through their message. I pray that all of these people continue to have unity in the way that you, Father, are in me and I am in you. I pray that they may, they may be united with us so that the world will believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you have gave me, that you gave me. I did this so that they are united in the same way we are. I am in them and you are in me. So they are completely united. In this way, the world knows that you have sent me and that you have loved them in the same way you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given to me to be with me, to be where I am. I want them to see my glory, with you gave, which, I'm sorry, which you gave me because you loved me before the world was made. Righteous Father, the world didn't know you, yet I knew you, and these disciples have known that you sent me. I have made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love you have for me will be in them, and I will be in them. Can be seated. I know that was a lot of scripture, um, but there's only uh, there's only one, two verses that I'm really going to lift up from this today, and that's verses 22 and 23. Uh, verses two, 22 and 23 it says he gave us his glory. Did that so that they are united in the same way that we are. I am in them and you are in me, so that they are completely united in the way the world knows that you have sent me and that you've loved them in the same way that you've loved me. Other translation simply says, Jesus is asking God, uh, make the Father, make them one. Make them one. Uh, they gave me this title, and I really was, I don't know if bothered is a good way to. Describe it when you're talking about things that God asked you to do. Um, but I was. I was a little bothered because I was like, they just came out of the series on racism um, and the church. And this, this felt like um, a heavy word. And I guess whatever God says is heavy. Um, but the title he gave me was the church that Jesus died to start. And I put it out there on purpose earlier this week. I put it out there last week. I put it out there on purpose so that I wouldn't change it. Because <laughs> right? I was tempted. I really was tempted to go in another direction. So um, let me get these things out of the way first. Um, I definitely want to thank God uh, for the privilege of standing uh, to attempt to talk to his people. Um, 
definitely thank Aubrey and, and Molly and the table community for being gracious hosts, not just um, today, but for the whole month. Uh, those of you who may not know, I've been here every Sunday evening for the month of June. Um, and that's been a, uh, it's been a blessing, man. I believe God is definitely pleased with what uh, we decided to take on. Uh, I think he's, I think he's, he's, he's encouraged by our behavior um, through, the, through the discussion group on uh, racism in the church. We have some good times, we have some, some intense moments, but the greatest thing about it, one of the greatest things about it is the ability to express yourself and your differences without feeling um, combative. And that's, and that's a place that uh, we all need to have, and we all need to partake in. So um, last but definitely not least, everybody that came out to support my CYM family got in the room, so, yeah. I like the subdued response so it doesn't seem like we're the only people in the room. That's good. That's good. But I think God is happy about this. We serve a diverse God. Yeah. And He deals in diversity. If every leaf on a tree was yellow, we'd be bored. Yeah. We'd be bored. Yeah. He appreciates diversity. Absolutely. So listen. This is Corey telling the story is going to be good, right? I just want to talk a little bit. I just want to tell you a story. Um, I really didn't know where God was taking us. Um, and it's not a browbeating message. It's more of a message of encouragement. So um, there's a young man. Wait, let me do this. Before we go any further, right, I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Y'all listening? All right, cool. I need y'all to remember this name. Jeremy. 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 Who asked you to remember? Jeremy. Man, y'all learn quick. That's <laughs> good. Nobody sharper than you guys. That's absolutely great. Um, so, thank you for that. So, how many people believe that God is purposeful? Yeah. Yeah. I can't see you because of the glare, so make some noise a little bit. Yeah. 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 So, yeah absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. I just need a little bit of encouragement. Good. So, we believe that God is purposeful. Um, there's no happenstances. There are no um, coincidences. Uh, there are no flukes or no freaks, right? Mm -hmm. God, everything that God does is on purpose. Yeah. So, in fact, the um, Bible tells us that everything works out <clears throat> for our good. Mm -hmm. and considering, uh, well, depending upon uh, if you're one of the people that loves God, right. and you're called according to his purpose. Right. right? Everything works for our good. So, um, God wastes nothing. And it's yeah. all woven into this fabric that we have and this difficult uh, thing sometimes that we try to walk through. And it's called life. He leaves it all in there, so it's all necessary, right? Right. So, I'm trying to figure out, um, and I really believe this, like, I'm trying to figure out what, let me just say this, I'm trying, to figure, I'm trying to accept the fact that I believe that God uses the very thing that we tend to use most often because he wants to redirect our attention sometimes. So, I'm convinced that God has a Facebook page. I'm not talking about somebody named God that named their page God. I'm talking about, I think, the God has a Facebook page. And he uses it because, guess what? We're, most of us are always on it, at least umpteen hours a day. We're checking in, peeking, doing our voyeuristic thing, acting as if we don't do that, but we do. Um, right? We do. But I'm convinced that God has a Facebook page because he uses what um, we use to get our attention. So, case in point, um, old high school friend. His name is? Jeremy. Good, 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 good. Now, Jeremy and I, we, don't, we never really talk, but you know, he's my friend. You know what I'm saying? I'm on Facebook, I got a whole bunch of them, but we don't talk. Right, you're right. About five, six hundred friends. I don't know their birthdays. So, right. right. But Jeremy, um, he posted a video on Facebook, and I believe this is God talking to us and to me. In the video. So Jeremy posts a video and he's really having an issue because what he's noticing in his neighborhood, he's from Queens. I'm from New York City, I'm from Queens. So he's posting a video about what's going on in his neighborhood in Queens. So what's actually going on in his neighborhood in Queens, he's highlighting the fact that um, what he was able to find was that there were six churches within a block, a city block. So if you ever, anybody ever been in New York? I'm surprised, whoa. whoa. So you know, a city block, you can get a 
some of reference what the city block, city block looks like. But there's six churches within the city block. Mm -hmm. But the problem that Jeremy was having with that, with that was that he couldn't tell what kind of effect that they were having mm -hmm. in the area that they were in. So aesthetically, everything looked the same. Um, but And he also didn't see any life change. So this is really uh, troublesome for Jeremy. And I'm watching this video, and it pricked my heart. It really pricked my heart because I believe that this is God, through his Facebook page, mm -hmm. talking to us, telling us what we should be concerned with. The fact that if we're an organization that is anywhere, um, and they're not immediate and direct and visible effects right. of our existence, then there's something that we're not doing right. Yeah. There's something that we're not doing right. If um, I'm a church or whatever, if I'm McDonald's and nobody comes and buys burgers in my restaurant, there's something I'm not doing right. <laughs> right? right. <clears throat> Just to drive that home, there's something I'm not doing right. So um, I was troubled a little bit by the by the video, and I'm going to look at this, I'm going to stay true, stay true to what I wrote. Um, but yeah, he's, 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 he's having an issue, and I feel him, and I, and I think I'm developing, have developed the same issue, um, and, and it's tugging on my heart, and I'm, and I'm feeling some kind of way. Um, so he posted the video, there's six churches within one block, um, and you can hear the deep concern, and the, and the and coupled with the lack of understanding, um, as he narrated what he was witnessing. So I'm going to let you in on the conversation that we're having, um, the, conversation, the conversation that he was having, and then we wound up talking a little bit uh, after the fact, a couple days later. So um, I didn't send a video um, for y'all to see, because uh, Jeremy, he, uh, he curses a lot, a whole lot. <laughs> he has a real colorful way of expressing himself. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't think that that was appropriate, um, considering uh, where we are this morning, so, <laughs> but I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna talk about it. So, um, and plus, you know, I kind of want to be invited back. This <laughs> guy, <laughs> or Kirsten, anyway. Um, so I erred on the side of caution. So, so the outrage that we had was the fact that there were six mm -hmm. churches on the block, and he didn't understand what he didn't understand what their purpose was. That's 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 a problem right there. I don't under, if he doesn't understand what the purpose of a church is that's in the community, then the church has to examine what it is that they're doing or not doing. Yeah. So um, he didn't see he hadn't seen any changes um, in the community. Like I said before, no changes um, in the lives that are that are going on, and uh, he was hindered or he was disappointed. It hindered his support, and he was disappointed. What do you think he was disappointed in? Not, because there was no change caused him to be disappointed. What do you think he was disappointed in? Church. I thought that too. But he wasn't disappointed in the church. He was disappointed in the product that the church was representing. So it's never about us, to some degree. It's always about who it is we represent. So if I say I represent Christ, but I don't live in that manner and I don't move in that way, or I'm not attached to Christ like things, yeah. then I cause people to be disappointed in Jesus. Wow, yeah. Not in me. Yeah. I'm just a byproduct. Right. Ultimately, they're going to make that decision based on what they saw me or right. didn't see me do. Wow. Jesus is the one that's ultimately affected. Yeah. So our job is what? To, make, to know God and make God known. Right? We struggle with that because of how we move. So, we talk about it. Um, we talk. Uh, we talk through uh, Facebook, uh, phone app thing. So we're talking through that. So like, hey, what's up, man? And we hadn't spoken literally, like verbally, in years. So he's like, hey, man, you must could tell by my Facebook pictures that I need a, sh a haircut. And I'm like, nah, I'm like, nah, I don't. I couldn't tell that at all. Um, he said that because you know I used to be a barber or whatever. He's like, yeah, my hair is woofy, man. I need a haircut. So I'm like, nah, I don't know. I didn't catch that. I, that's not why, why I hit you up. Um, but what I did, why I did hit you up is that I was intrigued by your video. I was like, oh, my bad. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend. Because he knows, you know, I'm, I'm something like a preacher and all of that. So he was like, man, I didn't, I didn't mean to offend. No, I wasn't offended at all. 
um, but I was intrigued. And he says, why? So I say, well, some of the stuff, some of the thoughts that you expressed in the video, I had those same thoughts. And I had those, think, those same questions. And he's like, okay, so now, he says, okay, so now I'm intrigued. So he wants to know, tell me what you're talking about. So um, what he wanted to know was what role does the church really play out in it? And I pause is pregnant for a reason. Just so we think, right? What role is the church really playing out here? Because again, let's go. Yeah, absolutely. So. <laughs> let's go, right? Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Nothing is wasted, right? Right. Nothing is wasted. So, <laughs> what role does the church really play out here? Um, and this is him talking, and I want to read this, right? He says, "What role does the church really play out here?" Um, he says, I don't really know the purpose. I see six churches within one block. That's less than a half a mile. Why does it appear to be divided against itself? Wow. Now, please, you won't, you're not going to hear me today say, you know, book, chapter, verse, and all of that. Um, and that's cool, but just trust that I'm walking through scripture. Yeah. Right? I'm walking through. I'm in, I'm in it. Um, what, you, what you're going to find through this conversation is the scripture is filling the need that Jeremy is having. Right? So, why does it appear to be divided against itself? Then he reverts back to something that um, I guess stuck, stuck out to him. He says, when I think about the role they played when I was younger, so you're dealing with somebody who's familiar with church, but something is going on. And how the church gathered around my family and I when I had a loss. He says, well, I'm not saying that that doesn't still happen. But what is the purpose that they serve in the community that they're in right now? Right. So I thought back to the video, and there was a long pause. I thought back to the video. If there are six churches within a less than a half a mile radius, that community should be booming. Yeah. And that's the expectation that they never express because the church is supposed to have the answers. Right. That's right. right. That's right. They're all waiting for us that's, that have the answers to execute. So uh, I was quiet. So his next, I was quiet. So his next statement was, uh, is what really snatched me. He says, I'm asking you these things. And it, it's coming from a secular humanist. This is what he calls himself. I'm a secular humanist. Secular meaning void of God. Humanist meaning I can do it all myself. But at the same time, because we all have a measure of faith that's embedded within us, whether we believe or don't believe, we still have this thing where we know something's supposed to be better than what it is. The area should be better. I should be better. So something's arrived with Jeremy. So I'm just like, wow, man, that was really like used for me because uh, even with all that there's a portion of belief that things are supposed to be better mm -hmm. so I had to admit to Jeremy I had to tell him what do you think I told him thank you thank you but you already knew this because you read it <laughs> but thank you yeah. But I have to tell Jeremy, no, you're right, man. You're absolutely right. So then he asked me, what do I think? Why did he do that? <laughs> so my thing is, um, here's what I said to him. Churches are supposed to affect the community, the community that they are in. Lives of people should be enhanced by the presence and the outreach, end quote, work the local church provided that is God inspired and not selfishly motivated. Wow. It's not about building a hurricane across the street from McDonald's. It's about partnering to move an agenda forward. The question remains for all of us is what's really your agenda? Wow. Is it wow. God's desire or is it your own um, I forgot the word we talked about this morning. Um, is, it, is, it, is it God's agenda or is it your own uh, 
validation, right, or your own feeling of uh, importance, right? And then the other thing was, if a church uh, leaves the community, that community should feel that departure. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. They should feel it. Yeah. Like, there should be a mourning wow. in this parking lot wow. if the community woke up tomorrow and the table wasn't here. Wow. They should be like, what the? You know where that happens? In a barbershop. Let, let the community wake up one day and a local barbershop is missing. They're going to freak out. Why? Because they're feeling the need. Wow. Wow. They're not just, it, it's not just about appearance enhancement. It's about um, aiding in my self-esteem. Yeah. So a guy can be like, yeah, uh, let me get a haircut. And he sits down. But when he leaves, he's like, yeah, all right, yeah, all right, yeah, I'll see you, man. It's all good. He got a different kind of style and a different um, way of feeling about himself. The church is supposed to do that. That's right. That's right. That's good. Wow. The church is yeah. supposed to do that. We're supposed to cause people to feel and think different about themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Through the word of God, of course. Yeah. 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 Right? We're supposed That's to cause, right. them, cause them to feel different and act different and walk different and talk different. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So when that happens, right, it wasn't, they weren't being effective. So here's what Jeremy says. Jeremy says, um, I agree. And did I mention to you that this is coming from a human, uh, a secular humanist? I said, yeah, you did. So then he said, so what is it? So, so I said, hey, you know what? Um, I'm going to share this with the people that I talk to uh, tomorrow because I'm, I'm doing this message. And um, the message is uh, the church that Jesus died for. Oh, uh, sorry, the church that Jesus died, died to start. And he's like, wow, okay, I like that. He's like, so what does a church like that look like? And what does a church like that feel like? Wow. So I'm like, okay, um, simply two words. It looks like unity, and it feels like love. Wow. Yeah. 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 Simple. Yeah. It's, it's a simple. It's a simple message. I'm afraid you're gonna miss the simplicity mm. of the gospel. Yeah, that's right. We make stuff harder than it is. That's right. That's right. So here's 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 Jeremy. He's he called himself a secular humanist. I didn't mention it on purpose, but I'm going to mention it now. Jeremy's been um, homosexual since we were in high school. Since we were in high school. And we're in our 40s now. I know I'm looking, but I'm in my 40s. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right? So obviously, there's an identity issue somewhere down the line. There's an identity issue. And we all struggle in some area or another with an identity. God says you're this, mm -hmm. and you're like, no, I'm not, God. Right. It's an identity issue. But when he heard, when Jeremy heard about what a church that Jesus died to start looks like, when he heard unity, and he heard love, he says, man, that's what I thought church is supposed to be about. Mm -hmm. Jeremy's a Super intelligent guy. He's a school teacher. Teaches history. But if you look at him, you wouldn't tell. You couldn't tell. He's got wild hair, you know, loose dreads, kind of. Smokes Newport's smile a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, he's a funny dude. <laughs> Incredibly intelligent, man. Incredibly intelligent. But he said, so that's what the church is supposed to look like. Loving and unified. <clears throat> When, they have, when there's a loss, they come through. When you feel in some kind of way, you can find support. So it's supposed to look like unity. It's supposed to feel like love for all people. Yeah. For all people. This is not an um, exclusive club. Jesus died for all people. Yeah. Not the people that sin differently from us. Right. That's right. That's right. <coughs> For everybody. Yeah. I think we um I think we miss that sometimes. Yeah, so true. We miss that sometimes. So we think that we got a lock on this thing. Nobody has a lock on this thing. I'm just here right now doing what I think I heard the Lord say. 
what I think I heard him say. Because I can always be wrong. Right. So I try not to speak in absolutes. That's right. We can always be wrong. But without love, right? <clears throat> without love, it's lost. Jeremy let me know that by explaining to him that the church should be about unity and love, that there was hope for him. Yeah, right. There was hope for him. Y'all still with me? Yes. Yeah. There was hope for him. So three things I'm gonna going say, and I'm not gonna like go through them. Just want you to remember: there's a really only one body. That's bothering me. What is that? I think it's in that list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's really only one body. There's really only one body. Yeah. So then why are they like, mm -hmm. I'm not knocking church. I'm not knocking church starts, plants, or anything like that. Eventually I'm going to do the same thing. But mm. here's, what, here's what's jumped out at me in, in the scripture. Here's what I think we missed. Let me go back to that, right? Here, for real. Uh, yeah. <coughs> okay, look. So, Jesus says, these are, this is a conversation that he's having while he's on the cross, right? So, he's thinking about us, he's thinking about the people. So, uh, he says, I'm not praying only for them. When he says them, he's talking about those that already believe. He says, I'm also praying for those who will believe in me through their message. Through their message. So how, what I do, how I live, what I say, how I talk, how I am, is setting up the stage for somebody who doesn't yeah, believe. That's right. That's right. Meaning that's right. I'm working on Jesus' behalf that's right. that's right. for somebody that doesn't believe. And they're going to make a determination based on how they view me if I should connect to Jesus. That's right. We gloss over that responsibility. It's real easy to do. It's very easy to do. I'm not talking to you. I'm just talking with you. Right. We all do it. Man, what? I'm praying for those who will believe in me through their message. So ask yourself, how many people will believe in Christ through the message that I'm putting out in the world? Wow. Who's going to believe in Jesus because of me? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah, who's going to believe in that? Who's going to believe in that because of that message? Something to think about. So it's one body. Unity has always been the goal. Unity has always been the goal. So I appreciate God um, and Jesus and, and the Holy Spirit and cloud of witnesses and that whole team that's going yeah. on in the, in the realm that we can't see. But Jesus being on the cross, he's dying, he's suffering, he's bleeding. He's thinking about the fact that they need to get this and understand this because I'm out of here. Excuse me. They need to understand this now. Well, excuse me. What do they need to understand? Jesus asked, Lord, Father, make them one. As you and I are one. Who do you think he was talking to? He wasn't just talking to the people that were standing around Calvary. Jesus being Jehovah Jireh, meaning not just the God that provides, but the God that sees, therefore he provides. So um, he knew that we were going to have an issue, or this would be a continuing issue, because it already was one in his day. Make them one. Because, as we know, people who are divided can't be stopped, even if they're for the wrong thing. Make them one. So, God, God is one, right? Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and, and the Father God. They're all one. Equal in power, different in roles and responsibilities. Such as us. 
because we're in the body of Christ, because we say yes to Jesus, we're equal in power. Good. So we all got different roles and responsibilities. Right. Yes. 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 We're equal in power. But we all got different roles and responsibilities. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah. The other thing is unity internally <clears throat> before we ever see it externally. That's the big. That's the big. Make them one. That's the big thing right there. Make them one. Meaning, help them to get right within they, within themselves, so that we can see what that looks like on the outside. Yeah. And it does happen. So the church, and and, and I'm about to sit quickly. Um, the church that Jesus died to start is not 803 West Point said Street. It's not the edifice. It's not the building. The church that Jesus died to start is you. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Good. Yes, yeah. yes. The church that Jesus died to start is you, Caleb. Jesus, Jesus died. You said yes. Now let's start Caleb on a path no, that's good. to understand and of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Earl, Jesus died to start you. You are the church, not the building. We are the church, yeah. not the building. So it's not the church's fault. It's just that their acceptance hadn't caused them to start yet. Mm -hmm. Is this making sense? Yes. It's just food for thought. That's right. Just food for thought. Your church is your, your community, your house. Right. First, thing, your house. Right. That's right. How your house living? That's uh, right. Come on. Yes, uh, sir. Yes. How your house living? Mm -hmm. If somebody is in need, like for real need, like danger, would they skip your house? Wow. Because mm -hmm. they know what y'all stand for in there? Mm -hmm. like, oh, no, I'm not going over there. <laughs> I'm going right here. <laughs> <laughs> Just making sense? Yeah. Making sense, Pastor? Pastor Orby's making sense? <laughs> 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 Give me a few words. <laughs> yeah. So that's it, man. <clears throat> the church Jesus died to start is us. So let's take some inventory. Wow. Take some inventory. Yeah. See what it is that um, that I need to investigate. Okay. To I'm see if whether or not I'm, I'm, on. I'm, I'm making Jesus attractive. Yes. That's right. Hello. And I wear this shirt and these shoes that match uh -huh. and this little chain and, and all that. And got my hair cut yesterday and all of that. Did I do that to make Jesus attractive? Mm -hmm. or did I do that because I have to stand before you? Mm -hmm. Then if it's if it's because I had to stand before you, then you are my God. Uh -huh. That's right. Uh -huh. I gotta look good for the people. Mm -hmm. Just food for thought. Yes, thank you. Just food for thought. Jeremy, this is not about Jeremy. I should say, this is not just about Jeremy. Jeremy is a picture of the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there are thousands of Jeremys. Yeah. Right. People who are, the people who may be confused about their identity, but have an understanding of what church is supposed to look like. But right. they're, they're not seeing it, nor have they experienced it. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. And it's our responsibility to cause that to happen. Yeah. Yes. It's weighty, yeah. but it's not impossible. Right. If you're compelled by love, mm -hmm. if that's your driving force, So, take some inventory this week, and hopefully it'll become habitual. When you get up and you say, do, uh, you say, God, what do you want me to do today? Who do you want me to reach today? What do you want me to say uh, to them today? If we wear such blinders, mm -hmm. <clears throat> if we were horses, we'd be champions. 
So we wear blinders so heavily. Not my problem. I see him, but not my problem. I got my own problem. But the funny thing is, if you take time and, 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 and be concerned about somebody else, you can get out of the way. That's right. You can get out of the way. How y'all feeling? Y'all all right? All right. Yeah. yeah. It really wasn't about um, the church needs to do this. Not so much. It's more about understanding and, and, and being reminded that the, the church that Jesus died to start was me. Yeah. Say that to yourself in the morning when you're getting ready. The church that Jesus died to start was me. The church that Jesus died to start was me. And it's going to immediately throw you into a reflective mode, and you're going to you're going to start looking and thinking about what is it that I, that I've started. What have I started doing? Make sense? Yes. Yeah. Right. So three things. Anybody remember what they were? Because you can't do what you don't understand. Anybody remember what the three things were? Not you. You just start student for the day. <laughs> Anybody remember what the three things were? Anybody remember what one of the three things were? Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> You're not laughing at him, but that's that's so key. Yeah. Broad picture. Boom. Oh, what else? Only one body. What else? All the people. What else? The church that Jesus died and started you. What else? Understand. Say again. Understand. Absolutely. What else? Equal in power. Equal in power. Yeah, yeah. But equal in power and everybody has different roles. Different roles and responsibilities. responsibilities. What else? Should be missing. Boom. What else? Inventory. What else? Y'all running out? People that are divided can't be stopped. Yes. What really stuck out to me. Absolutely. <laughs> what really stuck out to me was the barbershop example and how impactful they are in the community. <coughs> so, like, that's real. Mm -hmm. I can I can see that with certain entities. So. Um, just the impact the church is supposed to have when, yeah. when you said um, the, the barbershop helps to boost a person's self esteem, like right. the church is supposed to help bring you up, yep. mm -hmm. right. you know, bring you higher, whether yes. it be higher understanding, you know, higher view on how you see yourself or whatever, but it's supposed to bring you up, right? Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Higher view right. and understanding, because <laughs> we can't do what we don't understand, and a higher view of how I see myself. See, sometimes we cower from that because we think we're not supposed to consider ourselves. Yeah. Right? Yeah. My lot on life is to be a lowly servant. Mm -hmm. That's God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> That's not my pops. That's right. Wow. Well, <laughs> That's not my pops. <laughs> Y'all, hey, I did all that. To show you that you don't have any excuses because you learned something today. Mm -hmm. You learned something today. Yes, sir. And you can teach, and you taught it back to me, which means that it's stuck. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, the last thing that nobody mentioned, which is cool, but nobody mentioned, is that unity internally has to happen before we see it externally. Mm -hmm. The inside parts have to be repaired before it's even seen on the outside. Amen. 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 How are we close here? However you want, man. Pray it out. Did your group join, man? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, hey, let's let's stand and um, let's worship. Yeah. Musicians, y'all do that thing. <clears throat> Thank y'all for taking the time to, to listen. And I'm gonna pray and get out the way. And I think they. That's the thing they want to say to the Lord through song, amen? Amen. Lord God.
We love you, Lord. Yes, my Lord. Thank you, Father. We thank you for the church that you died to start. We thank you for ourselves, God. And we don't mean that selfishly, Lord. We just thank you that you were so mindful of us individually. That you died to help start us on this life. Your word said that you came that we might have life and have life more abundantly. You gave us double life. You gave us double life. Help us, Lord God, to be intentional in our actions and our behaviors and intentional in our relationship with you. Intentional in our relationship with others, God. Help us to divorce our preferences, Lord. We thank you for the local church. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for the local church, God.
Drawing closer by grace and all oh, my heart is yours. All fear. And all fear removed, I breathe you in, I lean into your love. When I'm lost, you pursue me. Lift my head to see your glory, Lord of all. So beautiful. Here in you I find shelter, captivated by the splendor of your face. My secret place, I'm wide awake. Drawing closer by grace, and all my heart is yours. All fear, and all fear removed. I breathe you in, I lean into your love. Oh, your This next part is probably one of my favorite song, or parts of this song, and it goes along with what Corey said. It's just realizing love and what love looks like in our own heart and how we realize it is over us. It's washing over us, and we can never get away from it. And when we can never get away from it, we can go into our communities. We can go to our Jeremy's and give that same love. Sing this with me. Your love is so deep is washing over me. Your face is all I see. You are my everything. Jesus Christ, you are my one desire. Lord, you my only cry to know you all. Washing over me, your face is all I see. You are my everything, Jesus Christ. You are my one desire, Lord. You're my only cry to know you. Tells us to go, God. It doesn't let us just sit in our seat and just say, "Oh, thank you, God, for your love. That's so awesome." But God, it's a love that compels us to go. God, as we continue this time of worship through giving, God, that we just give back to you, God, with a joyful heart. God, with a joyful heart of what we've heard this morning. God, thank you for fresh revelation this morning on love, and fresh revelation on what it looks like to go. We love you, God.